Can you believe that it's almost December? No. Like literally when this drops, it's the last day of November before we enter the month of all months. Which is December. Yeah, because I feel like December is like the culmination of like the entire year coming to an end. To me, the month of December is uh, special because it's my birthday. Yeah, that's true. But I think the month of December is just like, honestly, it's one of my favorite months. Is one of your favorite favorite? months. Yeah. To me, nothing else matters in December other than December 11th. Which is your birthday. Yeah, which actually should be my lucky number because I hear like number 11 is like a good number yeah like 11 11 people love that yeah yeah yeah. i I don't know why i never thought about getting like a 11 tattoo yeah you should yeah um Hmm. but i'm very excited for this month because this month is like probably my second favorite to my birthday you know june i love it because of my birthday but then december is like i love june because it's summertime uh, i'm you know i realize i'm much more of a like cold weather girl we're not going to talk about the weather today we're not going to talk about the weather (laughs) today but i am i must say like i really feel like i thrive in the winter time yeah and the fall winter time even though right now it's so cold outside it's freezing and i'm really scared for like what's to come because Mm -hmm. it's not winter yet technically it's still fall i want to i want to say something all right ali has this thing with jackets okay so when you live in New York, a lot of people got a lot of nice outfits outside and all that, right? Yeah, Everybody? New York is like fashion capital. Okay. So you got one puffer jacket. Mm-hmm. You actually have two. The okay. North Face one and then the other one. Okay. One is all black, which is classic. I always suggest people, if you want to get a winter jacket, get a, get a classic black one so you can just wear it every day and nobody would think um it's still like that you, one black jacket yeah though. but you wouldn't feel like something about a black jacket doesn't make you feel like i'm wearing the same thing okay you know but if you got like a yellow jacket that you love very much and that's your only winter jacket I doesn't matter really what bold. pants you wear you're gonna be the girl in the neighborhood in the neighborhood with the yellow jacket yeah i guess you are so now she got this gray one and you want to get another puffer jacket no, I, I told you, I don't want to get another puffer jacket. I want to get a coat so that I don't always look as... Puffer jackets tend to have like a more like sporty look. Okay. So I want to get a coat that's like more elevated. Okay, like it's a trench coat. Yeah, like a, like a, no, like a wool coat mm. that is like a little bit longer. And it gets like, if I want to go to like a nice restaurant, if I want to give off like an elegant vibe, I can't really do that. Like that, the, you can't the really puffer do jacket that. can only take it so far. <laughs> That's true, you know that's what true. I mean? Yeah. But anyways, guys, we are not here to talk about that today, okay? Um, we are here to okay. talk about... <laughs> okay. We are here to talk about the holiday season and more specifically traveling home or being with family around the holidays. Yes, which, which everyone got a very specific experience with that every single yep. year yeah but I, have, I do think we share some a lot of the experiences as well well now that we're married oh no i mean us like the people as a society as a society i feel like there's a lot of crossover of what people feel mm. about th- this time spending with the holiday with the yeah family. i wish there was more crossover in society with other things yeah i think this is like one that a l- most people have in common yeah um but before that welcome back to the what's the juice podcast yes what <laughs> Are you going to continue? Oh, usually when you say it, you say, my name is Ali Zaitsa. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> my name is Ali Zaitsa. And my name is Yoni Ikoto, your favorite host in the world. And um, yeah. Let's get into the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it feel like this is like our first episode? Because, you know, it's been... What are you doing? You're like very loud. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm still getting used to like a recording in this setting. It's like yeah. it feels different than than the thing we had in seattle yeah it feels different our setup we're still testing it out and trying to figure it out um but i am actually very excited about this episode so i want to get into it okay yeah let's go because i feel like i have a lot to say especially because i just actually came back from seattle Mm -hmm. um it was the first time that i went to seattle after we left all the way back in july and i was traveling back for thanksgiving but also for like other random like errands and things just like see my family and i have a lot to say about traveling back 
home or to your family for the holidays because I think this is something that a lot of people are experiencing in this month and like the past month because there's just so many like holidays back to back mm -hmm. whatever you celebrate and stuff um, and there's a lot of family time in these months that is like jammed together and it's like forced family time in a way forced well forced in the sense of like it's like it's yeah, the holidays thanks, so you have to hang thanksgiving, out thanksgiving you have to be with family and then christmas and then i guess it's just only two holidays like two. well i mean it depends like what holidays you celebrate but yeah. then there's also new years there's also yeah um, so like people people like kids are off school like for, for the winter break yeah for yeah. like an extended period of time but it's good i mean family time is good and which we will get into yeah but i think today are we gonna break it down and like are we gonna do how we decided to do like the three different yeah 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 tiers? We'll, we'll get into the okay. tiers. um but i think i think the thing that is different about traveling or like as an adult you obviously if you are an adult who no longer lives with your parents mm -hmm. you live in your own place you probably have a relationship or maybe you don't you have a group of friends you have a romantic a relationship right you have a job or you go to school and have a job and you have like as a you know young adult you have your life life yeah you know and you don't really share you're not under the same roof every day you don't see your family every day like you used to mm -hmm. so now you're like really living in your own thing and then it's a very different experience to spend time with your family for the holidays when you're in that phase of your life okay and i want to talk about what the differences are right let's say you live at home and then it's christmas mm-hmm there's, there's certain questions that your parents are not going to ask you because they see you every day. They most likely know exactly what's going on in your life already. It's really so, just another day at home, but the holidays. Right. So it's not going to be Christmas or Thanksgiving. And then they're going to be like, so, Yoni, how's how's your life going? Like, you know me. Like, obviously, you know, I live with you. So those conversations happen all the time, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't accumulate to like this whole thing that I haven't seen in a long time. So it's like got to cover our bases. Yes, but if you don't live at home and you you come back and you visit, yeah. That's when uh, I feel like if you listen, you know exactly where this is going like family love to I mean, your parents it kind of makes sense though. Like they want to know how you've been. Yeah. But I always feel like the approach it's just something about it that I'm like it's too concentrated. The anxiety that I feel mm -hmm. and I felt about how I just know there's certain expectations mm -hmm. that are waiting for me. Yeah. There are certain questions that are inevitably going to inevitably going to be asked. And there's conflict that is bound to happen. Why? Because it's the holidays. You're about to your family's about to spend several back-to-back -back days together everyone is much more fixated in the way that they are mm, okay but everyone that, is much more opinionated but especially one, nowadays that one is very family specific but that's what i'm talking about family yeah i know but like someone who who because when you say conflict as in like explain that a little bit like, oh what i mean conflict is like it's inevitable that some type of like argument or disagreement or debate is going to go down okay so that was my response to that that it's not every like different families are they communicate differently like it's not going to be the same like for example i want to say my family there's not there's no when you say conflict to me that's like very like like what conflict we're all here just hanging out chilling there is no conflict yeah very different family experiences over here <laughs> you know so when you said that maybe i don't know i'm just thinking about the listener maybe they're thinking like wait what do you mean conflict you know but maybe there's obviously some people who are gonna agree with that as yeah, well i'm sure there's some people that know exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> like okay i just i just know there's actually there's you know i was like trying to read a little bit about like do some research before the episode and this is like anxiety around the holidays doesn't come from like being busy or like you know buying gifts for people or something like that 
the anxiety around the holidays comes from family. It comes from having to deal with opinions you never asked for. Mm -hmm. It comes from being feeling like you're about to be interrogated about everything that you're doing and nitpicked and dissected all of your decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody likes that. And for That's some true. reason, older people in the family continue to do that. Younger people continue to take it. And it's a vicious cycle that never ends. Right. It's the holidays. Let's paint a picture. You visit your family and you go back. Let's say you moved away. You live in, I don't know. Let's say you live in New York and then your family is in Seattle. Perfect, <laughs> just example, right? Right. And it's okay. So you get there. You no, know, the first day usually is chill. Like the first day is always like we, we go ease. We go ease into it. As a parent, you yeah. probably already know what you want to know about your kid. But yeah. you're not just going to drop it on on them on the first day. Like, I already knew for sure that my dad was going to, like, ask me certain questions about certain things, going to bring up certain topics. Um, and it wasn't right away, was it? No, it wasn't right away. Right. Um, but I would say there's definitely, like, certain... It doesn't even have to do with me. Like, you know, now we live, like, every day there's, like, something going on in the world. There's always, like, so many news about so many different things happening. Mm -hmm. Um and you know like politically and like just a bunch of things like that that there's always something like that to talk about mm -hmm. and everybody knows if there's one thing to avoid at the dinner table on holiday it's politics mm -hmm. it just is even if you agree with each other there will be like for some reason it's just like that's like the so, last topic that you should talk about i mean i i would hate to talk about um politics on a holiday when we when i finally see my family again i don't want to talk about anything i guess we can, we can talk about serious things but maybe not like at the dinner table maybe if like you have a moment with your uncle on the corner or maybe you can talk to him about certain things but dinner table i want to have fun i want to just catch up with people i don't want to have like a serious yeah but then, th that's just me yeah but then okay so it's like you don't want to talk about politics but then we also don't want to talk about like it's a like catch up but then when people ask you certain questions i'm like oh i don't want to talk about this like it's it's like what can we talk about you know i don't want to feel like i'm being interrogated what are what are some reasons okay so let's start with work right we're talking about work is that is that do you want to do that the first thing or do you want to do like well i actually i wanted to i wanted to share this last point okay about how I also, I, when I went home, and anytime I kind of like, even when we lived in Seattle, but I wasn't, we weren't, we obviously were living together, so I wasn't living with my family. Mm -hmm. Anytime we would like go back to my parents' house, and we would stay there like overnight a few days, um, for some reason, I kind of got back into, into these like patterns that I found a quote that describes this really well, which says, no matter how far you've come or how much you've evolved, people often fall back into old family roles during the holidays, which can lead to conflict. Which means that, is that so true. you basically, even if you're like full blown responsible adult, you pay your rent, you got this, you got a job, you are living your life. Mm -hmm. For some reason, when you spend time with family, that go, uncle or that parent or that whoever that's like older than you, mm -hmm. the way like if they talk down on you or if they like put your their opinion onto something that you're doing, it it kind of like makes you fall like feel like you're a kid again, and it it takes away that like how we feel responsible. You feel like an adult. You feel like you have autonomy over your life. Right. And then the way that it's like that relationship, you could fall back into those like family roles. You know? Uh, yeah. I feel like older people in our families, they, they, always, they, they will always see us as the kids, no matter how old you are, because you obviously you'll always be younger than them. And then also I feel like, but that, that needs to change though. Like they need to start to like, Look at the younger kids in the family who are now like in the mid twenties or early twenties or or, or even, even like if, early thirties. Yeah, yeah. Talk to them as a, like a, an adult. Like it's always it's. I mean, I don't really experience that really. Yeah. 
I think it's the delivery of what they have to say. And it's also the way that it's said that it's like so it's like you can give me advice on what you think, but tell me once and that's it. Don't constantly go. Don't make faces at what I say I think is right for my life. You know? Especially if you're taking care of your own shit. Well, yeah, but no matter, like, I just think that if, I just think that if I'm, 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 if I'm not very intentionally seeking for your advice mm-hmm. and you just ask me like, hey, how's it going, whatever, and then I'm just starting to tell you, don't start nitpicking and judging and asking me to explain every single decision of everything that I'm doing in my life right now mm-hmm. with this kind of like, no, there has to be a balance between like asking me shit about what I just told you and balance. And just, it. and just offering shit that you think is right for you. Right. Yeah, exactly. But also you got to balance it out with like some type of, some type of like, oh, that sounds great. Or like that sounds, even if, I mean, who ca- who knows? Even if that uncle or that aunt or whoever doesn't truly believe that sounds great. I think it's just part of like, being family and part of like i get being honest and giving good honest advice Mm -hmm. but i also think i'm not a child anymore and like i'm an adult and you can't just speak to me like a kid and you can't just be like disrespectful to what i'm doing i can't speak to i can't tell you to explain yourself about some shit that i might think that you are wrong about they're, they're gonna look at us like we're crazy like how dare you the younger one quote unquote question my career Exactly. Or whatever they're doing. And we've never done that. I, because it's not my place. Because it's like, you know what you're doing. But it's almost like a, a a hidden rule that you don't even ask. But it's also because it's not even up for discussion. Our lives are always the focus. I feel like we got to... I wonder if there's like... Uh, I think it would my family. I wonder if there's like some families who the kids do challenge the older people more. And I think that's beautiful and it should be like that. Let's say I have a, a uncle or an aunt that does something and I'm just like, I don't think that's really good for you. You should try. I feel like that's very, that's not really common. Because most of the time, like older adults are already, like they're not trying new things and they also don't have the time to even like implement something new. But then also the younger person kind of realizes, okay, they I'm sure they know. I'm sure they're going to figure it out. Or I'm sure they're maybe even thinking about that. They're just, that's, I've, I feel like that so many times where like someone, like my dad would say something and like give me advice. And I'm like, I literally think to myself, you really give me no credit. Like you give me no credit based on like so much stuff that I've done in the past that shows that I'm capable, that I have a good head on my shoulders. Yeah. And you really think that you got to tell me to do this? You think I'm not already doing it, that I'm not already thinking about it? And it would be something like so obvious or or simple. It's like insulting. Yeah. Almost, you know? But anyways, I thought that was like really interesting how like the family dynamics, you kind of fall back into them when you're in that space. And maybe not everybody, but that's something that I definitely felt and uh felt even before but now more so than ever because i actually have been away from my family for quite some time yeah so on the way home were you thinking about like the list of questions that that someone might ask you yeah i was thinking did you think about your answers already or were you like you know i'm just go I'm just a little go. bit but i wasn't like prepping you know, writing them down like, like okay if, they if they're gonna me? ask me about this what am i gonna say I feel like some people do that. If it's I don't really think like it's a bad idea, honestly. No, it's a good idea. If they ask me about my job, I know exactly what to say. If they ask me about my love life, if they ask me when I'm gonna have babies, like you know, those are all just things that people ask, and it's all honestly, it's all from a good place. Yeah, it it is. It's not any of none of it is like ill meaning. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if we were like we meant to get to that like a little bit later, but I might be like jumping the gun a little bit. But there's also a thing that. If you move away, let's say to, of all cities, if you move away and you get to New York City, right? And then you go back home for the first time, mm-hmm. your family expects you to come back rich. <laughs> Not literally, but like they expect you to come back with land and your life is like changed. Yeah. And that's something so that I So you're in New York, like, so who did you meet? You know, like, well, and it's not 
like that. Like you come here, yes, there's a lot of opportunities here, but there's also a lot of people. So everything here, you know when they say if you make it in New York, you can make it anywhere? There's a reason for that saying. I always heard it, but now I truly understand it. You know why? Because there's so many people here. Yeah. And it's so competitive. But before when I heard that saying, I didn't truly know why people said that. I thought it was just like a cool saying to say, oh, it's New York. If you can make it there because it's such a big, cool city. But it's because there's over 10, mil- 10 million people here. Yeah. And if you want to, even if you want to apply to like a, I don't know, like a work at a restaurant somewhere, there's so many people applying to that job. Yeah. So just making it in, in even in the smallest industry is, is, is harder because there's so many people here. And yeah. everyone needs to make money. Yeah, exactly. And because obviously it's an expensive place to yeah. live and it's harder to like, you know, have a lifestyle that you want to have here, et cetera. Um, but I do, I don't know. And I, also it's another thing where people expect that like younger adults, there's always something new to tell. There's always something new. Cause there's like the, I just am expecting these like endless questions. But that can be on the phone too. Like if I'm talking to one of my parents on the phone, they'll be like, so what's new? I'm like, I don't know. I just talked to you on Tuesday. Yeah. Like what's new with you? Like how much has changed? Yeah. Like nothing. I feel like we should, we should have like a new question then like what's new. Yeah. I don't know. Like what, what can be new from, from Monday to Wednesday? You know, it'd be a cool question. I wish my parent would ask one of my parents would be like, what's something you've like been thinking about lately? I love that question. I've never been asked that. I ask you that all the time. Yeah. Cause I, cause that's what's important. Like what's on your heart? Like how are you feeling these days versus? I mean, everything is important. Like obviously how work is going, how your relationship is going, all these things like those are important too, but we're talking, we talk about those all the time. Babe, something about how, how are you feeling? Yeah. Is so much. Nobody asked me that. It's so much better. Like, how are you feeling? Like, I don't even care about all the things. Because when someone asks you, how are things going? If it's good or bad, there's a, there's an automatic uh, reaction or judgment to whatever you're going to say. Mm. Which is not very uh, constructive. Mm. But if someone asks you, how are you feeling? It's like, no matter, how, no matter what's going on, they want to know... How are you feeling or how you're dealing with it? So they're already like on your side of like, I'm going to, I don't know. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like I couldn't really like really explain it, but. <laughs> I think when someone's asking me, right, like the questions, the typical questions we all dread, right? Mm-hmm. When we're around family is always one is about work. Okay. So it's like, how's work going? And I always feel like I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, time to explain myself to whoever is asking and time to kind of walk them through like the new things that, and i i must say like obviously i have a very like specific job that i do um but i feel like i have to it depends on what job you're doing also but in my in my experience i feel like i have to sell what i'm doing like i have to sell Tell how them. i'm doing no like convince them that i have to convince good. exactly <laughs> And that's because sometimes I might like omit the things that are not going well just because I am avoidant and I don't I don't need someone else's opinion about something that I'm already negatively thinking about. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to like help me like I I will come to you specifically and be like, hey, like there's this thing that I'm trying to get better at or I'm thinking about trying this or that. And that's because, again, like I do YouTube and all that. So it's yeah. different. But I just always kind of lay it out in a very specific way to like sell that it's going well and everything's good. And then they, there's like no questions unanswered. So no. we can like move on from that topic. Yeah, you know, I do that too. Like if I talk to a family member that's like overseas and they ask me how things are going... Honestly, even if things are not great, I feel like I would say, yeah, things are good because I know I know what I got to do. So me letting someone in my family who's not here, who, who, who can't actually help me. I mean, they can give you advice. I mean, in, but the, they photo- don't really in know, the photography yeah. industry, what advice are you going to give me? Yeah, that's true. Nobody in my family can give me photography advice maybe some life advice about but i'm so into that stuff already that everything that 
I just know what I have to do. And sometimes, you know, ups and downs, that's just life. So me letting one of my family members know that something is not going well specifically, I don't want them to like, I don't know, like talk, maybe talk to another family member and be like, oh yeah, you know, Yoni is like, maybe he's not doing so well. I don't know. I don't know if this is happening or not, but I just know if something is not going well, you're the only person who knows about it. Yeah. And also another thing too is because there's they no don't point. Really, they don't really know how like much of this works, like what we do specifically. Exactly. So so if, that's why it feels like it doesn't even. What I'm going to explain to you, you're not going to understand. And even if you might understand it, I really don't need your advice. But and then, that sounds fucked up. But your advice. I mean, what do you mean by that? <laughs> like, there's certain people that ask me like how things are going, and I'm simply not going to tell you like the things that I'm worried about or, you know, wish we're better. You ever got advice from someone, and they think they're giving you such great <laughs> advice, but then in your head you're like, "This is not how this works at all." So yeah. what I do in that situation, I'm just like, you know, I never thought about that. That's what that's what I say if I like if I feel like they're giving me some like. S- advice that i actually can't apply because yeah. they don't even understand how the thing is yeah and i think on top of like the how's work going the next step is like you explain everything even if let's say it's not a job like ours but it's you know for example my sister she has more of like a corporate nine to five job mm-hmm. you know so she tells whoever it is that she's like catching up with that like oh it's going like this but i want this and i'm doing this but i'm thinking about this whatever um, but before she's like talking about what she is like planning to do, she lays out like the current status mm-hmm. of her job. And then the next question is like, so what's the plan? Oh, what's the plan is my, I hate that question yeah. so much. It's always like, okay, so what's the plan like after this though? As if, as if nothing that I do matters or is ever enough. Or like is this imp- is not it. It's like what's the next step? No, though? they make me feel like it's not even important. Why are you talking about what's next? I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And and it's also like the it's so it's not my life is not so simple for me to just like run through it real quick with you right now. And I'm also like I'm tired and it's a holiday. I'm not trying to talk about this shit. So that's one part. You know, the the work life, I feel like everyone who's listening, everyone deals with that. With that if, question. If you're working and and if you're not living at home, I feel like this is like very specific if you moved away, right? Yeah. So there's another thing now, the love life. Everyone got those parents and it's not like that with everyone, you know, mm. but but if you have those parents who are very interested in your love life. But it can be also grandparents, cousins, uncles, like, you That's know. what I mean, yeah. With parents, I mean, just like people, Family. you know, and I think that that part right there, it all depends what your situation is actually like are you Mm. single are you married are you living with your partner do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend yeah because i also think depending on how close they are with you like if you're just with your parents or you know like closer family obviously they know how things are going if you sorry if you are if you've been in a relationship like Mm -hmm. they know you've probably been in a relationship but it also depends how much you talk to them i guess with the love life i'm more so talking about if someone is single yeah and you go back home and you're at the age where quote unquote maybe you should be dating yeah like it's expected that your society made us think that you know honestly i'm just gonna take a number 25 maybe not yet but like 27 30 31 you should have you should be loving someone you know you should mm. be in love with someone <laughs> why are you scared of saying that no i'm not scared i just couldn't like i just couldn't get the word out okay and so if you are that person and you're 30 uh, or or I don't know, like 25 or 26, 27. It's and, different for everybody. Yeah, yeah, and you're going back home and you're single and you know that because to some people, that's the biggest question they're trying to dodge. And they it's know not it's even coming. Work they're shit. like, oh, I just know I'm going to show up here without a date and everybody's going to be like, so when are you going to? Yeah, and I think I for, per, personally, if, if I have, let's say I was an uncle and and you know like i don't know my nephew walks in and he's around that age i i will ask that question but i'm never gonna make him like feel bad or put pressure on him yeah and i'm not saying that's what 
parents do but and i feel sometimes like sometimes it's not intentional sometimes i think we as like the kids and i know i'm guilty of this i've become like very sensitized to certain topics that are brought up because sensitized they, explain it to someone who like doesn't a, understand i don't know if that's the right word but basically <laughs> oh, <laughs> basically right. i feel like i've become very sensitive to like certain topics that i just kind of make them maybe worse than they are like the expectation what's an example of, of a topic like that <sighs> like for example i really thought that when i was gonna go home this thanksgiving i was gonna be like interrogated about everything we've done these past like three and a half months of being in new york and it's been crazy and it's been wild and it's still you know it's still a work wild. in progress but i just had this feeling that i was gonna go home and it was gonna be like grilling time of like okay so you know like what's what's the result of like three and a half months in new york that's how i felt like but, someone was waiting but it wasn't like that at all so i think i built that in my head you did based on something else. you did build it in your head but then also it's specifically because we moved to the big city so it's like and it was a whole thing okay you move there it's more expensive there you move there with a goal with a, with a goal in mind like when 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 you move to new york i feel like you have ambition like yeah. and if you can right i'm not saying if you don't if you didn't move here you don't have ambition but if you oh yeah of course get the opportunity to move here you have this type of energy about you that all right i'm gonna go to the big city and i'm gonna work that's how i'm feeling right now yeah i just want to work i don't want no vacation every day is a grind and it's something about the city that just makes me feel like that and that's also why we're here yeah so when we go back home it's like okay so how how was work like what did you do or like how how much did you advance yeah yeah and that's exactly what i thought it was gonna be i don't know if maybe because i also before i went i expressed my like that concern to my mom and my what sister concern? no i just told them like you know i really don't want to come home and feel like i have to explain myself and i have to explain like everything all over again because i already had to explain us moving here just every why we're family moving. member yeah before we were moving i mean yeah same so i just don't want to do like I'm, i'm done like justifying this you know there's there's people in my family that are like really excited for for us and then there's some people in my family that are you know like just more pessimistic and not as optimistic as they wish they were which is way more constructive for us because like this is hard already i don't need you to make it harder by like questioning my decision but that's another story yeah yeah, yeah. um But anyways, I think when it comes to love life, um, there's also the questions of like, maybe you have been in a relationship, just like boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever. And then people start asking you like, so when are you going to get married? Especially the like older generations. That's still like very normal for them. Hmm. So when are you going to get married? Or like, when is he going to propose? Right, right, right. Which... That could be another episode. Have we done an episode yeah, we on? Yeah, we talked about all that. Mm, yeah, and I, f- I feel like that's 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 a topic that that could scare someone if you're maybe around a time when maybe you're not married yet, or maybe it should be time, quote unquote. But the thing is, the couple knows when it's time. I mean, also some couples just don't get married. Yeah, exactly. But I think the expectation is obviously still there, and. Um, same with like, when are you planning on having a baby? I know for a fact, like if you are a woman who is like, you know, getting closer to her thirties already in her early thirties because of just biology and different things like that, you start thinking about certain things of like, okay, not, I don't want to use annoying words or phrases but just like you know biology only permits you to like be able to have a baby to a certain age um and past that it gets harder and harder so i just know like a lot of women who might be single or who might be in a relationship but haven't had a child or whatever their situation is i know like that question is very triggering or it's very annoying yeah. and also it's like hella nosy like i i get I get the intention and it's not But that's not a question you ask. When are you going to have a baby? What do you mean when? No, think about that question. They mean more like are you thinking about having a baby? Yes. Do you want a baby? Yes. But are you, like it, if maybe someone is like she's, you know, in her early 30s and she's single, then it's like what 
are you thinking? I, I just don't like. I just don't like the question. When are you gonna have? Especially like as a family asks me that all the time. So Yoni, when are you gonna? I mean, we are married and in a relationship, so. No, no, exactly, but. But it also it, depends who it is asking. Like, how well do I know this family member? It's not necessarily even who is asking. To me, it's like how it's being asked. Mm, so how do you want it to be asked? But to me, it doesn't matter. That's what I was just saying. Oh. I don't know. If it, maybe it's because I'm like, you know, the man in the relationship that it doesn't, it doesn't um, it affects hit the you differently, same I guess. that it might affect a woman, you know? Yeah. Because it's also the expectation on like us to have a kid and to you know like time running out even though yeah. i hate like that expression um but all those Yo, all those questions are very like when, when, anxiety inducing yeah when we're gonna have a baby can we like put him here while we record a podcast <laughs> i mean who knows when we're recording no because he's gonna or she's gonna make hella noise and shit dude that's gonna be so nice it's gonna be so cute can imagine we, they, should they we get a third a mic right here oh i know get a third di- ni- mic for what well, when this, because I don't know, maybe they want to start podcasting at four years old okay, or something. This is talking so far ahead. Yeah. Um, and there's one. So I feel like okay, let's give like a suggestion for solutions. How people should wait, but for how people should specifically navigate love life questions because I think like the work one, everyone has a job or right. everyone goes to school. So when somebody asks you about that, it's like you can you always there's always an answer. Okay. That so. you can just be like, oh yeah, work is blah blah blah, and you can kind of like push it to the side real quick. Mm. But the love life one, I feel like it's kind of annoying to make your way out of. Yeah. So imagine this: it's Christmas, and you go back home, and you're single, and you're thirty. Okay. What do you do? And you know that you have those parents who will ask you about that one hundred percent. I mean, I think you've talked to your parents about this already. It's usually, it's usually like the other the other family members it's like Ooh, like your uncle it's and like shit? the uncle and the aunt and like the grandma it's mm-hmm. like when are you gonna give me grandkids and like all the these grandmas things, don't yeah? the, the grandmas mean, is it's they're so cute that it, it shouldn't that shouldn't bother you if you're yeah it's usually i don't know for some reason it's usually like the uncles <laughs> and like the 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 aunts that that could trigger you maybe yeah you know so I what do you know. do what would you do or not even 30. Maybe you're like, I don't know, 25. I think the younger you are, the more you, it's easy for you to dodge it. Because you can just be like, oh, I'm not like ready or I don't want to. And they're not going to be like pushing you for anything. Yeah. I think like especially for women, it's different. Because like the older you get, the more it's like a thing that you're, again, as I said, like running out of time. Yeah. Um, and I think that is definitely different for men. I mean, I don't know if you're single. By the way, this is just be like honestly. Why? Why isn't it okay for the kid who's not a kid because they're thirty, right? To just be like, honestly, do you mind if like we just don't talk about this? Hmm. See that that, that that's a good response, right? But it's you're giving into the seriousness of it. I would keep it so so much lighter. Okay, and, and say, say uh, like if someone asked me about it, and let's say I was a woman, I'd be like, oh, like I don't know, whenever I want to, or whenever I'm ready, mm. with, with a with a lighter tone versus, can we talk about it later? <laughs> because now it, 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 I guess that's true. You're identifying it as like a, a problem. problem. Like mm. I don't want to talk about that right now. It's a good point. Yes, yeah, so just be light about it. Be like, I don't know, maybe next year. Who knows? You know, if I get lucky. I don't know why that seems like. It seems like not an option, but it is an option. I just it, forget is. it is. The way you said it was just so like, can we please not talk about <laughs> it? I can't say it like that. Okay, yeah. I mean, I guess that's good. Keep it light. Yeah, I don't know if that's an amazing um, solution, solution, but I mean, that, that's what I would do. Okay, one last, one last question that I hate. It's like kind of random. I like random things. Let's but go. I hate when people ask this. And they feel like they can ask because one we're family and two you are like still as i said like the kid so you have you kind of have to tell me this because you're not an adult like your business is my business but my business is not yours oh i hate that the most yo that's what i'm saying in those family roles 
So the question that I'm talking about is I hate when people ask how much things cost. I hate it. Like if I have like a new bag or if I have like a new pair of shoes or if I, you know, uh, talk about like, oh, yeah, I just got this projector because I just got one for Mm -hmm. Black Friday, you know, (laughs) but let's say I like. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, shout out Black Friday. Um, And or I got this like laptop or these headphones, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. material thing. If some like if somebody tells me like they got something. I'm not thinking to ask how much it costs. I never thought of, I'm I've never been comfortable asking people how much I don't even ask people how much they make at their job or okay. how much their rent is. I don't ask I mean family. I'm talking about family. Even family. I don't I think don't, it's weird to ask how much like someone's rent is. I, I think like my it's sister? Weird. I mean, yes, that's your sister. Okay, but like if So where does where's the cutoff? Like if I have a friend who just got an apartment. Okay. We're talking about family. Okay, family. I don't know. I don't. I just don't like to ask how much because it's none of my business. If I'm not actively looking for the same thing and I just want to know, it's none of my business. And also, the reason why I hate it is because I feel like I just choose to spend money on certain things that maybe you know my dad would not or my brother would not. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like oh yeah i just got this thing and the immediate question is like oh how much was it and i hate answering that because i'm like i don't have to tell you and especially because i know that you're asking and whatever i'm gonna say is already gonna be like oh that is no no it's it's the the asking is because you you already know in your head that whatever i'm gonna say this is gonna be um there's going to be a reaction to whatever price I say. Yeah, because obviously it wasn't cheap. Because shit ain't cheap these days anyways. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I don't know why I feel like but people why is it are a, why entitled. Why is it a problem for you to say it? What do you mean? Like if someone asks you, like, how much did you because get? Because then I feel like I have to defend myself. I'm like, well, I, I got it because I really wanted to, like, you know, and I didn't get this because, but I got that. Like, I feel like now I have to explain why it costs so much and why I chose to buy it. It's like, fuck, let me just spend my money however I want to because I work for it. Yeah. But then I have to, like, justify. Yeah, I don't really feel that that much. And so also because... We have very different families, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I don't get the question of how much things are, really. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That was just a random miscellaneous que- miscellaneous question that I hate when it's it's not something that I'm like preparing for. Yeah. Like maybe the other ones, but it's definitely one that always creeps in. Yeah. How much that the how much question always felt so out of my business for me. I don't yeah. know. I'm not comfortable asking people how much. I don't care who it is really. Yeah. Like it's it's almost out of a respect thing. Like. You got this new apartment or like you got this new car. People love to ask how much a car was. Yeah. It's like if you really want to find out, like you can even, look it up. Even if I have a friend and, and let's say I got a new car and they ask me how much it was, it depends what friend it is. Because to some friends I will say it. But then to some other ones, I'm like. I would never ask. What's what's the point of knowing unless you want to get this exact same car? You just want to know how much I spend. Do you want to know yeah. how much I make? So then you can kind think, of just like gauge and know where to put me in your mind yeah, financially. Yeah, no, it is that. It it's is like, that. okay, Yoni, he's good. Or Yoni, he's, yeah, he just got a car. It was like $2,000. So he don't really... People want to. People love to just like put you somewhere. Us as humans, we love to cl- put things in boxes. Mm-hmm, we All right, love Yoni bought a car for, I don't know, 5 k We're going to put him like right there. Yeah. Or it's like, or oh, I'm say, thinking or of getting... Or let's say I bought like a brand new car. You put me way up here. All right, Yoni, he's good. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, he could buy like a 30K car. Exactly. So if I, it's almost like, so if I ever need money, I know I can just ask him. I don't think it's that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's that. Like, No, it's not that. Actually, if, it's if not your that. Friend, if what your you? friend tells you, if your friend tells you like, oh, I'm thinking of buying a house, right? Are you going to ask? And then they no. have like specific, they no. have a specific house like they're thinking about. Mm-hmm. Would you ask how much the house is? I tell you, I never ask people how much. I would be so curious. If my friend want, you know how you know how many times I've been in people's apartments, and I was like, I, I just wonder how much this is. Mm-hmm. But I feel like for me, sometimes it's out of resource. I want to figure out because maybe you know something that I don't know. 
but it's never it, it never is that though like they tell me and i'm like oh yeah of course this is four thousand dollars a month <laughs> but yeah so if, but you know if, what it if, is if, if sorry if, okay go ahead it's more like it's more like i want to know how much like this because let's say you go to someone's <laughs> i feel place. like we could do a whole <laughs> episode about how much <laughs> how much if you go Yo, to someone's do apartment <laughs> If you go to someone's apartment or house and they have a hell and nice place, mm-hmm. accord- like what you think is nice, you know? Yeah, yeah. You immediately are like, damn, I wonder how much they pay for rent here. Let's not say nice because it could be small and very nice. Okay, but so also let's just what's say nice? big. Let's say big. Okay, big, but also nice because it can be big and like nasty. <laughs> no, no, but anything that's big is more expensive. <laughs> okay. No matter how nasty it is, if it's okay, big. I think we can all agree what a nice place is. It's like okay. it's more modern. It has amenities. Like it's clean. Okay. You know, it's got good shit. So, f- my my thought process is first, I'm like, damn, I really wonder how much this apartment is like per month. But then after that, I want to figure out how do you get to how do you afford to pay for it. Yeah, I don't think about that. I definitely don't. Especially think about if that. they have a more like specific unique job you know mm. i'm just like hmm interesting interesting yeah your brain you, you do that i mean I, I don't ask people how much no no but like is. you you think about that that's like my, my thought process and you know it's funny because while you're in that apartment walking around and they talking about everything but the one thing you actually care about which is how much is this shit? Because mm-hmm. then you can kind of like be more in the moment and be like, okay, I know how much this is. I can sit down without looking like around, you, wondering. You, can't, you don't keep asking yourself that in your head. It's like, damn, like, are we thinking forty five? Yeah, I think it's. I um, I don't. I would never ask that. Because then you know that information. Then then what? Yeah, you can't. Okay, it's but you n- can't help but be like, damn. So you can afford to pay this. I definitely, babe. I don't think about how they can afford it because I don't even think about how much this... Sh- I do think about how much it is. Mm-hmm. But then but what do you do after that? That's it. I wonder, but I never. I will never okay, ask Okay, and let's say it comes out... You know like- how awkward I would be asking someone how much the apartment costs? Like, look, right? Let's say we're talking, we're hanging out, and then... Like, how do I even ask it? Um, so, how much? No, you would... People always Yo, saying you know, how much people, sounds crazy. To me. When people talk about like how much, when they want to ask how much something costs that someone else has purchased or has, mm-hmm. it's always like, "Do you mind me asking how much you pay for rent?" It's always, "Do you mind me asking how much that cost?" Okay, now you put it. Think about that, right? If you ask me that, you're just putting them in such a like awkward position because no one would be That's like so selfish yeah, i don't really want to share that <laughs> exactly because now the whole thing is going to just be weird it's gonna be so it's like uh, bro it's not that serious just can, tell me yeah we can we can we can keep watching the movie i actually don't want to tell you how much i pay for this so it's so that's why i don't do it especially if i ask i could do it. i can't i can't do it maybe yeah. maybe it's different from men do you ask that do you ask people how much their rent is or how no, much their car no, is? No, I don't. Ca- I actually, I really don't care. I just want to know. But just because I want to know doesn't mean that I actually care. Therefore, I won't ask it. Okay, but if we're talking about this, is like so off topic. But last thing, right? If we're talking about like let's say a pair of shoes that someone got, mm-hmm. and we're just talking about it, I would maybe ask like if I'm interested. I'm like, I really like those shoes. I would be like, are they more on the expensive end? And then they could be like, like give me a ballpark. They would be like, oh, they're between like two or three K, uh, hundred. Sorry, not K. It's your- <laughs> between 200 or 300. <laughs> and then like, that's, that's fine. You know, I think it's, it really depends. But if you're getting super personal and like, do you want me asking like how much you pay for rent? Do you have a problem telling people how much shit is that you bought? Let's say you bought glasses for a thousand dollars. But I would not buy glasses for a thousand dollars. That's why I say let's say, and then I ask you, would you feel uncomfortable answering that because it's very expensive? Why yeah. don't people want to say it? Because when people ask me how much shit is that I bought, because everybody has a notion of if you can afford a thousand dollar pair of glasses, that means you are balling out. Okay, listen, right? <laughs> listen. If you ask me how much something costs, I will tell you how much it was. But I would feel 
so not uncomfortable, but I would be like, damn, man, I would never ask you. I would never ask you the same question because it's so not your business. But also, why is it so deep? Because it's noisy. Why do you want to know? Nosy. Oh, what is it? What did you I say? Said, you said noisy. Oh, it's nosy. nosy. You guys, if you listen to this, English is not my first <laughs> no, no, language. It's just that word you always get. I always say noisy or nosy. <laughs> the second one is right. Nosy. Nosy. Think nosy. about it like nosy. So what do I say? Noisy. Noisy. <laughs> well, um, a lot of people are learning English listening to this. I've learned. So um, oh, yeah. it said nosy and not noisy. That means a person who wants to just know everything. No shit. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um, we yeah, got a little off topic there. Yeah. But to close out the episode, we want to go through just real quick rapid fire solutions mm -hmm. because the holiday season is not over. You we, can do the solutions. We still, <laughs> okay. We still got, um, we still got several holidays ahead of us for the month of December and a lot of family time ahead. And, you know, honestly, obviously like there's people that have different relationships with their family they don't like they might be more like yoni where they have no mostly no issues they might be like me where they have quite a bit of anxiety when it comes to a lot of family time or they could be people that don't like really hang out with their family like that for the holiday i don't want to say a lot of my family is just overseas it's very far so like i can't just that's true go to belgium or you know wherever else that's true i usually just make i don't know like, but i also met your family and everybody's chill <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's kind of like when we hang out hmm, but i don't know but you also it's very different yeah and it's okay yeah so first solutions okay if you are somebody that is anxious around this time for spending time with family i think finding activities to do mm -hmm. when you are you know waiting for dinner to be ready activities like what like if you want to give an example what's like an activity board games are great board games card games let's say you don't have any of that at your house well make sure that's what i'm saying it's you like, gotta that's, bring it's like make sure you bring that shit make sure you are you're thinking of activities that you can do yo that's so funny imagine you're coming home from out of state and then you go into the store specifically before your trip mm -hmm. and then you're literally looking for board games to avoid all questions. Or if there's like something your mom has been like trying to get you to do in the house, mm -hmm. do it then. Okay, well, what if you're done with it? Okay, well, I'm just saying basically yeah, like activity. in order to not have a lot of idle time, like a lot of time where you're just kind of like sitting around, that's open time for questions, open time for interrogations, for specific topics to come up. It's like, oh, have you, have you heard what <laughs> blah, blah, blah said? Oh my God, this was crazy. And then you get into arguments. It's like, it's great to, to, especially if you know there's certain family members that will always bring up some controversial shit. Mm -hmm. Just like have things to do Yeah. when it's that downtime. Okay, that's one. Another one is, I think it's great to have a plan. Ooh. You know your family. Yes. You know what type of person everybody is. Mm -hmm. You know what they'll say. You know what type of things trigger each person. What type of topics and questions trigger your siblings or your cousins? Everybody has their sensitivities. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. And like the older you get, the more you will learn everybody's triggers and behaviors and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's good to be aware and like prepare for those things. Like they mm -hmm. shouldn't be a surprise that like your cousin got really mad when this topic was brought up and like left the room. And then now it's hella awkward and it's like a whole thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's good to prepare in that sense hmm. you know prepare it's like remind yourself of like the case by case basis of what the reality is of your family mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah no i get it okay i i just couldn't add anything to that because you just said it so well okay the next one is to try to prioritize alone time because when you are with family you're with people all the time and since you don't live with them you're used to being on your own mm -hmm. so when finding when you went to Seattle, did you have a long time? Did Honestly, you try? Do you remember trying? Do you remember needing that? Uh, like, no. Okay, like, okay, I need to step away. Because I think like every every day we kind of had like an activity or something that we were like going somewhere to do. Mm -hmm. So we were like about to get ready, going out. Like there was always something going on. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I didn't feel like I needed, like there wasn't a lot of like condensed, concentrated family time. Yeah. It was like broken up. So even though it might feel selfish to 
find some time like if you have a book it's like you can take an hour to just read your book and do your own thing or be on your phone whatever like you just need that time alone you're overstimulated by all these people around you're an adult now you have your own apartment your own life your own thing so it's like you're usually by yourself yeah i remember i remember being in in, uh, romania and we talked about that in previous episodes and i remember me kind of like stepping away from everyone every once in a while every few hours because i and this is actually the first time that I that I felt like I needed a long time. And I would just go upstairs and just like either be on my phone or just like Yeah, I mean and I that's totally And it fair. felt so good and then I would just like come back and I'm and I'm like recharged, you know? Yeah. Totally. But like my my social battery was like just I mean it's also because of language barrier and like you know, all these other things. I feel like my, my social battery was dying faster there than mm. usual yeah it's like i got like a like like you know how when you have a bad phone and it's just bad battery but it's also because my family is so like loud and energetic and so much going on all the time i never thought of, but uh, it was like amplified because there was more of us yeah it wasn't maybe. just my brother sister and my parents it was like the next level <laughs> i think that's what it was yeah it was a lot um i also think but but i had a good time oh you had to clarify <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, no, but I totally get it. And I think another solution is when it comes to, you know, how I mentioned conflict before is like, keep in mind that you got to just choose your battles. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change someone's mind over Thanksgiving dinner, you know, and why even try? So that's why I'm like, if a specific political topic comes up and it will come up and someone says something that you just don't agree with. Is it really worth getting into it and saying like I get I get it. It's important to talk about things. It's important to try to make people understand all perspectives, etc. But at the same time, this is a holiday. This is not the time when someone's going to change their mind and be like, you know what, you're right about X, Y, and Z about this thing. Especially the older they are, and I don't know. I just feel like you're sacrificing time with your family by. Just choose your battles. Just don't choose, don't, don't fight all of them that present themselves at the dinner table, you know? I think just fighting, period, doing a holiday when people just need to catch up and love each other and have a good time and laugh and jokes and drink hot chocolate. That's what I want to do. Like, for real, I don't want to talk about anything. I don't want to have even like a, like a serious discussion. I can talk... We can do that on any day. I can call you and we can talk about all these things. But on a holiday when it's supposed to be like a good vibe and just like, I don't know. To me, like it's it's a, the argument and someone may be like, I don't know, not agreeing with you and then things get loud. It's not the right energy for this time of year. It's also about how everybody approaches this because not everybody approaches this the way that my family does, you know? I mean, no, I no, I get that. And I'm not even talking about because you can that. talk about like you know ser- more serious things. I don't think it's necessarily like you shouldn't talk about those things. You should just talk about like unserious things. Yeah, you're that's, gonna. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, have just 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 have like a chill approach to it because it it really sucks when when two of your cousins are like fighting about some shit. And it's like Christmas and they're having some... It's like, yo, what? It ruins everything. What are we doing, yo? Can you guys do that next week? Everyone came in town. We're trying to have a good time. There's literally hot chocolate right now. We can You can have that and, and talk about, I don't know, your love life or some shit. Yeah. No. I, I would rather do that. I feel you. Yeah. Um, And the last one is one that I realized I like came... I I, uh, implemented recently when I was in Seattle is like try a different approach as in we as I said fall into old patterns of like you know being in a family everyone has like their own role and stuff but also everybody has they react the same way to the same thing every time like every time this topic comes up this person reacts the same way and every time this other topic comes up that person reacts so what would be a different approach that someone might be able to use so Basically, it's like when someone reacts to maybe something I said Mm -hmm. in a way that I just knew they were going to react that way, Mm -hmm. I would then react 
the same way to how they reacted, the same way I've reacted every time. So you would react. Like, you know you how would, there's you would, like repeat conversations you have in your family. It's like this is an ongoing thing that's been happening for years of okay. like this specific subject. Okay. And every time, every person reacts the same way, and it continues to be the same argument. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to change your reaction to their reaction? What's your new approach? My new approach is I'm going to not react how I've reacted every single year for the past Christmas every single christmas for the past few years which is how like high energy or no like... it's gonna be the opposite okay. and for me that always was like you know because i was around my family all the time and we were so like high energy and high spirited and passionate but also like get can get angry and fired up really quickly i would always just it's like the louder somebody starts talking the louder you will start talking to them mm. and then you know how it's like when someone starts whispering you can't help but start whispering too we tend to do that as humans, but in my family, because everybody always raises their voice and it's always, you know, high levels of everything, I used to always, it's like you always match up that energy and then it just keeps going up and up and up and up. It's not constructive. It's not good. And it's, <laughs> no, it's it feels not. terrible. It's not. So, you know, ever since we've been together, I've tamed myself a lot more and I'm, the way that I react really? to certain things is a lot more like constructive um and clear-headed so there's that side of it but then also i've realized that if i just react the same way that i reacted all the other times before it's going to be the same outcome and because i'm aware of that i'm going to have a different approach and instead of reacting the same way and having the same outcome mm-hmm. let me try yep. to not react that way exactly. and see what happens let me try to that and that be will like work. so the opposite I, that's my you know me that's my favorite thing to do yeah and what happened was they didn't know how to continue yeah if i'm having a conversation on the phone with someone and they let's say they uh, i said something that upset them or like we're having a disagreement about something and then they start like raising their voice right yeah but i didn't do that and then instead of me getting mad that they're raising their voice at me and raise their raise your voice to them and they're r- raise my voice I'm just gonna say instead of doing that, which will which will only escalate because yeah. now we're both yelling. Yeah, I would say, yeah, but you don't have to yell. I'm just talking. As soon as you just bring it down, it's almost like you're pulling them down with you. Because mm. down they're just gonna look silly. Because you can't. It's hard to argue with someone who doesn't yell back at you. Yeah, exactly. We've had that in 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 the beginning of our relationship, right? I mean, not you. Not you, like that. Level. You used to tell me something like. For me, I hate arguing with with you because you don't match my energy. <laughs> so if I we, used to tell you that all the time. If we would argue about something, she would be up here, and I would just be like, "Yeah, but that's not what I meant." And when I said that, like it, it would be like this on this tone. So now, if you're the person who got that higher energy, it, it sucks to argue with 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 someone who's yeah. not even not necessarily like not phased by it. But their energy is just somewhere else. And sometimes it's like frustrating for the other person. Yeah. Yeah. And but it works. And I and I just I don't know. Everybody that's my personal experience. Everybody has various no. um relationships and patterns and things that they have with each person in their family. But I just think that it's like see what happens when you try a different approach than the usual. And I think usually it's that, like, instead of choosing to yell or choosing to match that person's energy, is like, let me see what happens when I'm trying to be more chill, more construct- constructive, more mindful. Why do you think when someone yells at you, we have, the like, the automatic response to yell back? Why do you think that is? I think it's, in, like, human nature. Because we always, like... It's normal, even it's, it's like, like a so thing we bad. don't even, it's unconscious. It's, I don't know, I know it's like a, there's like some type of research around just like body language, a bunch of different things that people start mimicking each other when they're like having a conversation, they start doing a lot of the same things. Yeah. That's why I said, it's like, if I start whispering, you're going to just kind of start whispering too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know yeah well that was it we got to the end of this episode we Um, hope that 
it was constructive and it wasn't making you any more stressed about family time coming Coming. up yeah because now we have i mean there's only christmas coming up now right well i mean there's like hanukkah for whoever celebrates that there's kwanzaa i think is also a thing Mm, yeah yeah there's you know the new like new year's eve yeah there's have a a good time you know relax don't overthink it and just stay calm and just remember to make hot chocolate and turn on this podcast episode and just relax, okay? It's December. It's time to get cozy. Like, why would you want to be yelling while it's, like, snowing outside and it's, like, beautiful Christmas music? But you know what? Some things just come up, you know? Well, you got to bring them down. <laughs> okay that's true <laughs> just because it goes up don't mean you can bring it up but yeah um if you listen to the end of this episode and you got to the very end we need you to put this in the top in the in, in the, the comments. comments okay hot chocolate that's a nice one just comment hot chocolate and i feel like that's gonna that's gonna set the tone for december yeah and say do you like hot chocolate with whipped cream or with marshmallows that's that's a lot right that's a lot (laughs) please you guys if you got to the end just put hot chocolate and basically what that signifies is that one you got to the end of this episode and then two that we're gonna bring it down this this yeah and just relax when i think of hot chocolate i think about just like good vibes yeah good cozy vibes you can't have hot chocolate and argue with someone (laughs) (laughs) like something is wrong yeah you know true so uh, let's uh, let's keep that energy and uh, yeah, that's it. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Okay, we love you guys. Thank you again for tuning into this week's What's the Juice episode. We are nearing the end, end. of season two, oh. and we're nearing our first one hundred episodes. That's crazy. crazy. Yo, we're gonna have to do something special for one hundred. Oh yeah. If you guys have any suggestions on like a topic or anything that it has to be like a good one, so no, I think for one hundred we need to do. An, a big off topic um episode or like a, just a q a mm, we just answer but that's it. the one we end the year on because yeah. 100 is going to be the last episode of okay so two. that could be like a q a you know like how do you feel mm. like you can ask us questions about season three okay ask us questions about what are you guys and we're not necessarily going to answer that because it's supposed to be a surprise but yeah january we're gonna brainstorm, we're gonna brainstorm. i don't yeah. know if i want to set that in stone yet yeah Sure. But if you guys have any suggestions, uh, you can comment on what's the juice uh, if you are like watching the YouTube video or you can DM us. Mm-hmm. Um, but appreciate y'all and hope you are staying warm out there because it is a brick. It is brick outside. Yes. And um, if you don't know what that means, can you explain that to people? That means it's very cold. Yeah, very cool, right? So make sure you got your layers on, your hand warmers and your hats and scarves and all the things so stay healthy out there and get you some good hot chocolate i'm out bye okay bye